Hey everyone, this is Ryan Jeske with another episode of Caliber Club TV. Today we're going to be talking about something really cool, something that we have a lot of experience with here, and that is solar products and panels. Today specifically, we're going to be talking about two different solar panel options on the market and why I decided to go with one over the other. Let's go do it. Guys, we are back. So we here at Caliber Club TV are an outdoor enthusiasts. We love camping, we love hunting, we love fishing, we love spending time at our off-grid cabin, and all of these things typically require some form of power generation. Now, yes, you can store power, you can run a gas generator, you can do a whole bunch of different things, but what I've found that I love are running these really basic solar units and then also some bigger solar units that we use back at the house um, in the big RV stuff like that there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this but what we're talking about here today are taking some kind of portable generator out and using one of the foldable power blankets solar blankets however you refer to them now this blanket right here is made by a company called Powerfilm. This is the Powerfilm 120, and many of you guys have probably heard of this via military installations and things like that. So basically, this material that's used on this blanket is able to be shot through and retain the rest of the panel without it being damaged. So if, let's say you were somewhere where there was gunfire and the potential risk of being shot at or your panels being shot, the power film is a great option because once you shoot through it, you don't lose that whole section of panel. You only lose a very small portion and the power film keeps on going. Something like the off-grid Trek uh, solar blanket here, which is, spoiler alert, actually my favorite, this thing is going to not handle that quite as well. However, there are some fail safes in there as well. If one of those panels get hit, you're not losing everything, but you're losing more than you would with the power film. So you guys might be asking me, well, why then would you choose the off-grid Trek blanket over the power film 120? And there's a few caveats in there because we're not actually comparing apples to apples. But when you take a look at the dollar amount, this Power Film Solar 120 is about $1,500 for 120 watts. When you figure in the weight, which is much lighter, a little bit lighter than this, when you figure in it's foldable, it's flexible, you can take it anywhere, plus the military component of it, it really is a great product. But I've been running into some trouble with it. When I go to plug this thing in to my Energy Kodiak here, and I go to charge, I'm only able to get about half a charge no matter how long I leave this panel on. Right now, if we were to unfold this, it would start charging. Well, if I can't charge my battery up all the way, it's not really doing me, uh, you shouldn't say any good because it is charging half of the battery, but that's not the point here. The point is recharge your batteries all the way every chance you can get, and it's just not doing what I need it to do. Now, if we compare that, to the off-grid Trek solar blanket. This is a 215 watt panel, but the price of this is around $1,400. And you're getting just short of twice the wattage. And using this panel, I am completely able to charge this to 100%, much faster than I am with the power fill. Now I'm sure if I took an off-grid Trek 100 watt panel, that would give us some different results, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about comparing dollar for dollar, bang for the buck, what are you getting and is it doing what you need it to do? So, as a little demonstration here today, I wanted to show you these panels. I wanted to show you how they work. I wanted to show you how you lay them out and connect them. Um, and then some of the benefits of the off-grid Trek panel, which we do carry and uh, is really, my go-to at this point. What I've been doing personally, I've been running two of the 215 watt panels together, and then I use 430 watts or so to charge my devices. Now I know that's a whole different conversation from what we're doing here, but I just wanted to demonstrate for those of you looking at a power film, that it may have some shortcomings depending on what you're doing. Now, of course, 
this is great because this can get you up to you know whatever you need there's a bunch of different connections you can run it to the battery on your car you can charge your laptops your cell phones and compared to some of the backpack models you know the small little 20 40 watt type panels this thing is going to do a lot more but again it's a lot bigger so guys let's lay these panels out i want you guys to see the difference in the size of the panels and then i'm going to show you kind of how they hook up i'm going to show you how the power film hooks up and what we're getting i'm going to take a reading from it and then we're going to lay out the off-grid trek panel and i'm just going to take a direct reading because i don't have the correct connector for this right now okay guys so the first thing we're going to talk about here is the power film 120. i don't want you guys to think that i'm bashing on the power film because it absolutely has a place and it's a very very cool product and panel i want to show you kind of the difference in what you're getting and why it is that I'm starting to prefer the off-grid Trek blanket over the power film. First of all is size. The power film is pretty darn big. I'm gonna show you how you would go about laying this out. There. 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 And there. Now we're not working with the extremely level ground, but that is the size of the power film 120 remember that's 120 watts and it's very thin it truly is soft flexible all of that but now i want to show you guys the off-grid track and remember this is 215 watts instead of the 120 So when I lay this out, you're going to absolutely see the difference in size, especially when you're comparing what you're getting out of it. So as you guys can see, the power film is quite a bit larger, quite a bit larger than the off-grid Trek itself. That is one selling point, is the size, but remember, the off-grid Trek blanket is a little bit heavier than the power film and less flexible. So we're gonna lay each of these flat out on the table. We're gonna take some readings and then we'll go ahead and close out the video. All right guys, so our Energy Kodiak is kind of our, you know, the unit we always use to test, the one I'm slamming around in the truck and all of that. This is the connection. Like I said, I don't have the connection to actually set up the off-grid Trek blanket. I had to order a new one in from Canada. So that'll be coming, but it basically just goes into here, turns into place, you plug your panel in, either panel, and you're charging. Now they obviously have different connections, but that's how it works. Now what I wanted to do is lay these panels out and just take a quick reading on them so we can kind of understand what, what the voltage is coming off of these. The off-grid Trek blankets are really, really great. They do well in low light. They are basically designed for overlanding. Both of my panels are equally dirty because I use them, so they're dusty. So I'm gonna leave both of them dusty-ish because that's where we're at. And I just wanna show you in a regular working condition what you're gonna be getting out of each of these panels. To test the off-grid track, we're going to use our hookup, which goes to a battery connection, which is great. So if you ever want to charge the battery of your RV, cars, any of that kind of stuff, you've got it. Let's see what kind of voltage we can get out of the off-grid track solar blanket here. A uh, little dusty and a little bit of a sunset, but let's see what we're getting. Similar conditions with both units. So we've got 19.84 volts DC. 1983, 1984. But guys, even though we're getting 19.83 volts, remember this is a 215 watt blanket. So next I'm gonna bring the Power Film 120 up here, lay that out in the same spot as good as I can. And let's see what kind of reading I'll be able to get off of this in the same exact light conditions. And I think this will demonstrate nicely for you guys how the actual price point 
of the off-grid Trek blanket makes more sense. We've got the power film hooked up. I'm actually able to plug this into the Energy Kodiak and get a reading off of it. Try to keep it off as much of that panel as we can. This way, so we've got all our panels being actually exposed to the sun. And this is putting out 12.26 volts. The 215 watt off-grid track panel was putting out 19. This is pointing out 12.26. And the full charge of this unit is 12 and a half to 13 volts. So you can see why the PowerFilm 120 is not quite fully charging what I needed to do. Closing these up, there's a way you do it. Of course, there's certain fashion you go, and once you know that, they're pretty easy. It's a little hard to do on this table, but essentially folding up nice. And I kind of like the final presentation. I don't even want to say the presentation, that's not right. Um, I like how soft the power film is. I really do like that, and it's not really achievable utilizing what Renee uses up at Off Grid Trek because these panels are square and hard and they can't be bent or folded in the same way as this. I also like the flexibility of this if you're trying to fit it into a bug out bag or something like that, but please know if it's the limitation. Like I said, I'm only pulling 12.2 volts off of this. Most of the time you want to get your batteries up to 13 and a half volts or something like that. So it's not quite doing what I need it to do. Now, the off-grid Trek blank is very similar. Boom, boom. This is a wonderful add-on. The material is extremely thick and heavy duty. It's almost a rubbery plastic, um, but flexible. It's not actually waterproof, but I believe it's water resistant. I've had them wet and all kinds of stuff and no problem. Now, as you can see up here, we also have some USB ports. Now, most of what we have in stock at the Prescott Caliber Club right now is going to be exactly like this, but um, Rene does have some new models that I can order in as well with some additional uh, USB-C charging and things like that. Another nice thing are the accessories that I'm able to get through Rene. Like I said, a lot of times, this is all a guy needs. This is what's gonna kind of come in some of those bug out kits. You're gonna get a solar charge controller and then a unit for your, uh, to hook up to your batteries. But I also like the fact that you're able to string multiple panels together very, very easily by utilizing one of their two to ones. So essentially I plug First solar panel in here, the second solar panel into this, and I now have 430 watts coming out here. I can plug that into a solar charge controller, have this come out of the solar charge controller, and you can be running your entire RV off-grid cabin, that's how I run my off-grid cabin, whatever you want. You can get tons of extension cables. Off-Grid Trek has used these Anderson plugs, which have proven to be great. You can step on them, walk through them, rip them, pull them, crank them. Um, and they really, really hold up well. Like I said, I wish I could show you the connection into the energy. Um, I have was recently up at my off-grid cabin, and like I said, I used that same system. And so I was uh, not thinking, and I left it up there. But Renee has another one coming in. So, guys... This right here is what I prefer when it comes to foldable solar panels or blankets. Off-Grid Trek makes amazing products. There's only a handful of places that you can find them around the country. CalClub.store carries them. Um, we ship to most anywhere. And 
We have a few of these in stock. So if you guys are interested, head on over there. But for now, what I wanted to say is that the power film, like I said, I'm not dogging on it at all. This is serious military grade equipment. These guys make full tents, easy up type things that are covered in these panels to run all of their stuff. It's very, very cool. But for the price point for a civilian, to get what I get out of it, the inability to even charge something as simple as this, it really makes it kind of something I would not recommend to the average person. However, you're doing pretty good with one of these off-grid track solar blankets. So guys, I think that's all I've got for you today. If you have a moment, jump down below, subscribe, like our video, share it to your social media pages. Um, Comment. Please comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any other questions because we'll be doing more videos on all of this solar equipment coming up. And I'd like to know what it is you guys would like to see. So that is it for today's video. I just hope that each and every one of you stays safe. And as always, don't forget to keep prepping.